For this screencast, we're going to use our Shakespeare play, A Midsummer Night's Dream, to demonstrate how we might use tags and, and uh, then build a structure to our document and then export to XML. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is a DTD, which is a document type de definition that I've created to explain the structure of a Shakespeare play. Now, you don't really need to understand exactly all of the things that are going on here, but suffice it to say that each of the elements that you see here will ultimately become a style in our play. So, if, if you like, right at the very top we have um, Shakespeare play. This is the overall uh, tag that, 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 if you like, surrounds everything, the root, if you like. And then inside that we're going to have two elements, dramatis, and then we're going to have the play. Of course, we might ultimately have other elements inside that. We might have the colophon, an introduction, and various other things. Now then, when we look further down the list, you'll see that each of the these two items, dramatis, and then further down play, has things inside uh, um, brackets, which represent the, the, the things that are contained inside those elements. So inside dramatis, we've got dramatis head, dramatis personae, play, location, etc., Inside the play, which is the most significant part of this whole text, then is the act. And inside the act we have a, either the first scene or a, a simple scene. Um, we also have optionally a location. We have stage directions or character or prose or verse line on every for, for each paragraph. So in other words, these are the elements that exist inside the play. And then as you see for the location, we might possibly have um, a scene image. Um, for the dramatis head, um, we're going to simply have data, in other words, text, and so on down the list. So you're not expected to understand entirely all of these issues. And if you're interested in reading up on DTDs and how they're constructed, document type definitions, um, then there, there are pl plenty of there's plenty of literature on that subject. But when we use this DTD, we're effectively uh, describing a set of rules for the structure of this play. Now we'll just put that uh, away and we we'll go back to InDesign. Now within InDesign, we need to do certain things to make use of this structure. The first thing I'm going to do is to go to my uh, menu and go to my view, structure, and show structure. This puts up another panel um, to the left, um, which as you can see just includes one element, which is uh, of course the root. So every document must have a root, but as you'll see in a moment, we're going to um, rename this. So before I go on any further to explain how we're going to tackle the DTD and make use of that DTD, I should just point out that I've got some things that I've already done to my play. Um, and one of the things that we need to have a look at are the um, the styles, the, 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 the paragraph styles. So let's just bring that up onto the screen. Um, and you can see that I've already got paragraph styles. Now, those paragraph styles are named exactly the same as the elements within the DTD. This is optional, you don't have to do this, but I've done this in my case because it then makes it easier to link or match these two uh, aspects together. In other words, the tags that will become in, in the XML and the styles that are inside the InDesign document. And you'll see how this will, will work in a moment. Um, the other thing that I should point out is that I also have object styles. I have an object style for um, my image and we can just have a look at that. That's just called scene image, as you can see there. Um, but also, the other important thing is that my text boxes, um, for example, if I select this and again look at my object styles, um, you'll see I have a, an object style uh, called play. So each of the elements in my document have some kind of uh, definition and they're not just set up as uh, a, a, as default uh, names if you like they actually do match the elements inside the DTD um, furthermore if we go back to the beginning um, I've actually separated out my dramatis, dramatis personae 
uh, again into a different uh, text box with a different object style name. Here we are, Dramatis. And this isn't threaded to this text. So if we actually look at uh, View Extras Show Text Threads, you'll see that this uh, box here that's behind, sitting behind um, is not threaded to this text. Uh, whereas, of course, it's beyond the, for the play, everything is threaded together. So, in other words, we have two stories, one for the Dramati Personae and one for the play itself. And as you, you'll see in a moment how significant that is when it comes to the tags. OK, so let's go back to the structure pane now. And under the structure pane, we can um, import the DTD, or I should say load the DTD. So I'm now looking for my DTD, which I've already uh, created and showed you on the screen a moment ago. There it is, Shakespeare Play DTD. Um, and in fact, you can see at the top of the structure window, it's telling me that I've got that in. And in fact, if I double click on it, you'll see it also uh, gives me a, a description of it. Now, what that's done by importing that um, is to put tags into our uh, tags panel. If we go to Window and Utilities Tags, just bring that onto the screen, um, you'll see that I now have um, in my Tags panel, I have a tag uh, that's represented with inside the DTD. So importing the DTD effectively populates this Tags uh, panel. Okay, um, so what we can now do is to map the styles that we already have in our document. Let's just put that away for the moment. We can map the styles in our document um, in, to, the, to the tags. And we do that in a number of different, there's a number of different places we can do that, but I'm going to do it here under the structure window. So I'm going to map the styles to the tag. So we've already got styles in the document, so we're mapping those um, to, the, uh, to the tags. Now, as you can see here, we do have map by name. So this really just explains to you why I have created styles in my document, in my, uh, my, my, my Midsummer Night's Dream play in InDesign. I've created them and made them exactly the same name. However, if you don't have the same name, you can simply map them by hand. So for example, if I click on verse line, I can select the style name that I have here. Now as it happens, um, I do already have a uh, verse line here. So that's obviously going to make my life easier if I simply hit map by name. Okay, so there are some elements that are not mapped, but that's okay because you'll see in a moment why I'm not using every single style uh, available to me in my document anyway. Um, so let's just uh, leave that like that and click OK. Right, so now you can see immediately um, that over here in my, in my uh, uh, structure document, I've got two stories. Um, the first one is the play itself and I know this seems like it's the wrong way around that's because um, it doesn't the order is not that significant at the moment you'll see we'll, we'll be changing that and then this second one story is the um, dramatis personae now let's bring our tags panel back okay and now with um, our our second story uh, in, a, in the dramatis selected just highlighted there um, I can simply go to my uh, tags panel and select Dramatis. Okay, so that's that's done that. And then go to my play, and then find the tag called play, and then that's uh, that's done that. Now we can actually move these things around. So I'm going to drag Dramatis above play, so it puts it in the right order. Now the other thing we can do is with root selected. Highlighted, I mean, by by uh, if you look up in the top left uh, where the um, structure pane is, um, I can now move to my Shakespeare play, which, as you remember, in our let's just bring that up again. Um, if you look at our Shakespeare play DTD again. 
that's the very top element. So looking over here, that's the very top element, in other words, the, the, the root of all things. And then we have two things in it, the dramatis and the play. Those, so the, the, the Shakespeare play is simply the root of the whole document. Dramatis is, is one, uh, one field, one text field, like that. And then the rest of the text fields all linked together, threaded together, are the play. And as you can see, we also have colours uh, representing um, that the represent those tags. So all of the text fields are within that sort of pink colour. Um, and then we have um, wrapped around every single element, we also have a, a little colour-coded uh, bracket. And if you look over here in the structure panel, you'll see that um, I can uh, open up these triangles and show every single one of these lines in the play. So for example, if I double click on this one here, it highlights where we are in the play. Uh, let's go to this one here that takes us to there and so on. Right, and then um, we also have uh, the ability, as I say, we have the ability to, uh, to move these things around. Um, but now that we have this um, already organized, I can now export this to XML. So let's export this to XML. By default, it gives it the name of the InDesign document with an XML extension. Um, now we can view the XML using a number of different uh, programs, uh, but I'm just going to turn that off because I don't want to see it immediately. I'm going to uh, open up um, uh, an application to, to view it in a moment. Okay, let's uh, export. Uh, and now here it is here. Now I'm going to open this uh, up in my text editor called BB Edit. And then I, I'm going to show you that on the screen and it looks um, incredibly complicated. Um, but that's alright because what we can do with this is to actually tidy it up so that we can see how it looks with a bit of uh, breaking and so forth. Okay, so let's just scroll through this. Uh, let's just have a look at the first scene, for example. Okay, we have, um, there we are, we have a tag act wrapping around that. First scene, location, stage directions, character, first line, first line, first line, and so on and so on. Okay, that's so, so far so good. Um, so before we're done with this, I just want to, let's just not save that. Move that to one side. Um, I just want to explore one other thing with you. As you can probably see, we haven't at the moment got anything uh, happening with the images. Um, that's because objects, unfortunately, within design don't get mapped uh, automatically. So you'll notice that when I mapped the styles to the tags, I didn't have an option to map the object styles, only the paragraph styles and the character styles. So we actually have to do this uh, by hand. So we click one of these images here, this is the beginning uh, of my scene, and I just then click the tag that represents it, scene image. Okay, now if we look at our play, let's move that out of the way, um, you will see that we then have a scene image with a reference to the image itself. Um, so we're not going to be doing a lot of um, work with images here, so we can quite uh, happily just go through and, um, and and select the images one one at a time. So I'm just let's just go and do one more for scene two. So select the image, click scene image, and then you'll see then if we move down to the second scene. By selecting the image, we should be able to locate it in the structure view. This is quite a long scene, so here we are. Okay, so here it is. 
there's the next image scene image. And then if we finally export that to XML again, replace the one that we've created so that we can just see the difference. And once again, I'll uh, just tidy that up before I show it onto the screen. And there you can see we now have the scene image with a location, uh, in this case, on my Google Drive with a perfectly correctly formed XML document. Okay, thank you.